Hello, everybody. It's me again, and here's another topic about Swift Basics. And uh, in this video, I'm going to discuss objects and classes. Uh, we're going to start with a simple example, and then we will add uh, more to it. We're probably going to do a few, few videos on object orientation. So let's go ahead and start. So I'm going to create a new playground. Now, you could use the same playground we've been using before, but I'll, I'll start fresh this time. So I'm going to do a new playground. And let's call it classes and objects. Okay, and then you click on next. I'm gonna put it on the App Center project. That's fine. Then create. Let's put it on. Let's just leave it there. Fine. All right. Let's make that bigger a little bit. So what are classes? I don't know if you're familiar with object-oriented or uh, classes are basically blueprints of uh, uh, objects. <laughs> this is the easiest way to remember it. So basically you can have a class and then you can create duplicates, objects of that class. Okay. And uh, the uh, class definition of an object, the class definition, basically class, has three parts. Classes has three parts. First thing that you have is uh, the name of the class, the attributes, or you call them sometimes properties, and then the behavior, and then you call them the methods, if you're coming from uh, Java. Or in this case, it'll be functions in Swifts, okay? And functions, okay? All right, so how do we define or declare a class in our own custom classes, okay, in uh, Swift? You start with, let's say we have a bank account. Uh, this is gonna take, we're gonna take a class of a bank account. So let's start with a bank. Uh, a bank account example. In uh, in a bank, usually you you store information about a bank account. All right. Now, and it, this bank account usually have some attributes, and usually there are some behavior or method that goes with it. For example, a bank account, you can do what. A bank account has account number. It has balance for sure. Say the owner name. Now this could be different. And of course, this could be an owner name or customer ID, whatever. But uh, the, we're going to take a simple example: an owner or customer name for now. Now, of course, you have a lot more, but we'll, start, we'll stick with these, just three things, okay? You have account number, balance, and customer. You can have, uh, you can have uh, uh, all sorts of information about the customer, okay? You can do the same thing with the account, okay? The type of account, uh, some attributes. For example, if it's a saving account, you have, or if it's an investment account, you have maturity date. Uh, if it's a CD, then you have, again, you have a lock period. So you have a lot of these things. But for now, we're going to just stick, stick to the basics. And usually, in an account, you can do what? You can do withdraw. And these are the behaviors, okay, or the function you can usually deposit. And of course, you can do open and close. Okay, but let's just stick with these. All right, and then we will. I want to have another one called print details. Okay. So usually, these are some of the things that you should be able to do with an account. So how do we define uh, an object or a class that adhere to the following: the class name the attributes, and the some of the functions available in it or the behavior. The way we do it, you start with class, and the, the class name in this case will be bank account, and beginning and ending, that's all. Now you can say by default, this is 
inherits, we call it inherits, is the type of this class is any object. In Objective C, it's an S object. In Java, it's an object. Okay, so these are uh, these are the class. This is how you define a class. Okay, just simple like that. Now the next thing you can do, uh, you can define your attributes. So in this case, we have account number var account number. And you want to give it a type in this case, float. Now you can initialize these to zeros or uh, no account number. We're going to make it string. Okay. You can initialize it if you want, and that would be fine. And if you don't initialize it here, I'm not going to initialize it. Let me show you what's going to happen later on. Now you're going to do var. Uh, we have uh, the next one is balance. And this one is float or double. All right. And same thing with var customer name. And this one is again string. Now you got an error. Notice you have an error. And this error says, wait a minute, you don't have an initializer. You don't have an initializer in Swift. You have to either, when you define a property, either assign them by doing them this way, like I was showing you, or you have to create an init method, which is, if you're familiar with object-oriented terminology, this is like a constructor. We call this the default constructor. And the default constructor What do you do? You initialize the variable or the attribute that you define here. Now, I have these attributes defined there, and so I'm gonna need. I need to define. I need to initialize it in the default constructor. So I say account uh, number equal into string and balance. Of course, you can do all sorts of stuff within, in the initializer. Okay, you can generate a unique identify, a unique account number, all that stuff. But that's not the topic here. Okay, the balance it's a float, so I'm going to say it's 0, 0 0.0f or just 0, 0.0.0. 0. And then you can I say customer name again. Customer name will make it equal to blank. Okay. It didn't like it. You have to put a space. Now the errors are gone. Notice. Okay. So this method get called, this default constructor get called whenever you create an, a copy or an object of this account. I'll show you this in a minute. All right. In the next video, I'll explain to you how we create non-default constructor. All right maybe at the end of this video. Then these are the attributes, so we're done with this. And uh, these now we need to take care of the withdrawal and deposits. So this is the next section is your functions or behaviors or uh, methods, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so here you can say function and the first one is the withdraw. Okay. And this one receives the amount that we want to withdraw. So we say amount, and then it's a float. And it will return back the new balance. So it returns, and doesn't because we define that as double, let's make it double. So it returned back the new balance. And then here, all you have to do, of course, I'm going to add a little bit of logic, because you can't withdraw if you don't have uh, enough fund you shouldn't be able to withdraw money so you can say if amount if amount is greater than or if it is less than the balance now you can use here I'll use a, a keyword called self dot balance what does this mean self mean you're referring to the current object or your current class okay so if it is less than self balance, this attribute we're talking about, then you can do the withdrawal. 
then you can say balance equal or self dot balance. You don't have to use it. This you don't have to use self here, but it's it's a good practice to do that. Self dot balance equal. You can do the shortcut minus equal, which is you subtracting amount that is being sent to us from the balance. Else, what do you do? Else, we say, no, I still got an error because I have not returned anything. Okay, it, you need to return something. Okay. Skip my emulator. Okay, let's go back to Xcode. All right, else what? Else we should, we issue an error message. Of course, this error message, what you can do actually, you can have here multiple return as we was talking about functions. One would be the balance, the other one if there's an error message. So you can do another string, okay? But we're not going to do that right now. Uh, you can say here, else print line, And then you can say, uh, not enough, not enough funds, right? All right, you can do more. Than, this is a simple thing. And then we will, at the end, we'll return the balance. So this is one of the function, a simple function. You receive an amount, you check if the balance we got a problem, so I'll continue. Uh, in the, we had a problem in the previous video. So I was just saying this is a simple function. It receives a value. We check if the amount is less than the balance. We allow the transaction. Otherwise, we print an error message saying that you don't have enough fund. So this is for the first, uh, for the first uh, uh, function. We can do the same thing with the with deposit. So we can say function. And then you can say deposit. And then again, we receive an amount, double. And then here, you return back, we return back again, double value. In here, we just do a simple transaction for now. All we have to do is that you just say balance. Or we can do self again here, self dot balance equal plus self equal self dot balance plus the amount that is being passed and then we do what we just say no we don't need to do that it's already included here we don't need there you just do that all right then you do uh we return the balance just say balance return balance self dot balance or just balance okay do that the same thing here just to be consistent okay so this is the other uh, this is the other um, function in this class there is one more which is what the print details now, in, if you're coming from Java or another language, you usually have a method called toString. So I'm going to say function, print detail. And this one does not receive anything, but it returns a formatted string. Okay. And then this one have the following in it. Okay. I'm going to say s, let s, tr equal we're going to use to format we're going to use the ns format ns uh, the ns class and then we're going to use format here we're going to say account number equal and then we're going to put here uh, because it's a string we use the ampersand and then the at and after that i'm going to put new line so it will skip to the next line. Then I'm going to say here, um, customer name. Again, we do the same thing here, equal, because it's a string, we do the same thing. 
and then finally we will put again slash n then we will put uh, slash n means a new line all right uh, and then we will put here finally balance equal and then we're going to put here because it's a float we will use 2f for two decimal and then that's it now we will put the argument the first one was balance sorry the account number comma second one is customer name comma and then the last one is the balance now we delete those three things at the end and that's the thing i return return uh str okay All right, so how do we use this class? So I've created the class according to this definition. I have the attributes, I have the initializer, and I have the functions. Now, how do I use this class? The way you do it, first we define, it, we define a variable that uh, account one, for example, equal, uh, we call the bank account, all right, so this is what we call an object. So we're creating objects, okay? Object, which is a copy, if you think, of the class. So the, blue, the class is the blueprint, and the objects, they actually are the, 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 actually hold the values. Okay, so this is, you can create as many accounts as you want, and all you have to do is that you just let, you use a variable and then you create the account. All right, so now you can set some of the attributes. So you can say account one dot balance that the that the account number, and then you can do because it's a string. You could do that. And then you say account one dot customer name equal Jim Scott Wong. Okay, and then finally, and you can do the balance, count that balance equal, um, let's say, 20,000. Okay. Now notice, here is what you see in the object. If you click on these eyes, one of those eyes, you'll see you have, here's the account, here is the account number, here, this is the object that you see. This object has, this account number has this value, the balance is this, and then the customer name is Scott Long. All right, how do we use some of those functions? For example, you say let b equal new, no, we're gonna say withdraw deposit ACC one dot we're gonna do some deposit. So if I say deposit and if I say the amount is let's say a thousand, so now I will have the balance is twenty one thousand. And B actually contain the value that it returns from us from the function. So after the transaction is done, we return the new balance. Okay. So that's that. If you want to take money out, you can say let you can already B is default. You can't use B again because it's let's just make it a bar so you can change it. So you can say B is that. Now you can say B equal. If I say it's equal, and then say let's call the the, uh, the withdraw. Now if I say the withdraw, and if I know the balance is twenty one thousand, if so, if I say twenty five thousand, and then I do that, it will give you an error, right? It would not allow it. Why wouldn't it allow it? If you click on this, and you look, we should look here, not enough fund in the console application, not enough fund in your account. So it didn't happen. The balance stays the same. But if I do the same thing, command copy, and then I do, uh, let's say 20,000. Now I have 1,000 left in my balance. All right, so this is how you call the function. So we created an object. 
we set some of the attributes and then we call some of the functions available in that object. Now, this piece can be done differently. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about in the next, okay? And this will be the end of this class. Uh, remember I said there is a default constructor and there is a non-default constructor. Sometimes the application, when we design the application, we say, okay, you want to create an object? Fine. But you have to pass me some important information. So if I deem that these informations are critical to my application and they have to pass those information, then I create what we call a non-default constructor which means that you have to pass some values to it. So you can say init again. And here I can say, uh, I want to I wanna account n, and I'm going to call that, it's a string. And you can actually spell it out, account number. And then you can do balance. And it is double. And then I'm going to do uh, customer name. And it is a string. All right. Now, here we need to initialize those values. What am I getting here? It's not initialized. So what do you need to do here? You, can, you take the values that is being passed to us. Remember when we define function, you take the values that, you, you, that are being passed to us, and then we assign it to those attributes. So you say self dot account number equal to the account number that is being passed to us. So not account number, account num, I guess. Okay. So is this correct? Yeah. So this is the first one. Now you do the same thing with the other one, self dot uh, balance equal to the balance that is being passed to us. Okay, this balance, that's why we have to use, here we have to use the keyword self, right? Because I have bal oh, balance is here, not spelled correctly here. Balance. Okay. Uh, this balance is different than the balance in the, uh, in the class. This is actually only seen in, the, uh, in, your, uh, in this init, init method or function or the constructor. So that's why I have to assign, I use self-balance, which I refer to this, equal to the balance that is being passed to me. All right. And finally, I need to do self what that customer name equal to the customer name that is being passed to us. All right, now it should be happy. All right, so now instead of, that's what we did, okay, we created a non-default constructor. Now, instead of doing this, I could do it all in one line. I'm gonna do it here. So you say create another account. And this one, we say what? We say, uh, let CC2, or account CC2 equal, notice what's gonna happen, bank account. Now I have two, okay, here's bank account, but if I do this, notice what I have, I have the default constructor and the non-default constructor. If I use this, now I have, I give, I give, I get the names and then I give them values. Okay, so the name, the account number is one, two, 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 for example. And the next double is, let's say, a thousand. The next one is a string, uh, Tim Smith. Okay. You got the idea? That's how we create. We, we, now we are creating the account and the same time passing the value. I haven't used the print detail, details method, so let's use it here. So if I say print details, if I say print line, and then I use ACC2, the new one, dot print detail. You see that? Now, what's going to happen, it will print out, if you look at it in the console, it'll print out the detail. Okay, here it is. Account number, Tim Smith, and the balance. All right, so this is 
uh, in this video we covered how to create a class custom class how we define attributes how we define constructors or initializers how we define functions and how we create objects how we use these classes we set the attributes and how we use we create two uh, we use two ways of creating objects one what are you calling the the default initializer or default constructor and one non-default constructor or initializer and then we pass values to it uh, according to what we define in this here all right, we'll see you in the next video. And then the next video, we'll start talking about some of the object-oriented uh, stuff such as inheritance, uh, overloading, overriding, and things like these things. All right, so we'll see you in the next video.